Okay, we're, this is part two of video 3.3 for AAT. Here, we're trying to use synthetic division or long division to decide whether or not a binomial is a factor. So remember, we just said, the factor theorem said that if remainder is equal to zero, if the remainder equals zero, then the divisor is a factor. Okay, so let's give that a try. So we're going to synthetically divide by negative four. Remember to always change the sign of what you're dividing by. So we have negative four into coefficients are one, six, and eight. Didn't skip any terms, squared to the first to the zero. Okay, we drop the first one, we get one. Negative four times one is negative four. Combine those two, I get two. Negative four times two is negative eight, and my remainder is zero. Ding, 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 ding. That means that yes, x minus, or x plus four is a factor. Okay, so now you try it on the next one, on B, and see if x plus 4 again is a factor of x cubed plus 3x squared. Okay, so hopefully you divided it and noticed that the remainder came out to be 1. The remainder has to be 0 to be a factor, so the answer is no, it is not a factor. Make sure you answer the question. It's a yes or no question. One major purpose of dividing polynomials is to dis discover the factors of the polynomial. So find all the zeros. Remember, zeros is, is found by finding factors of each polynomial using synthetic division with the given factor. So we're telling you that this right here is a factor. Now you want to find other ones. So we're going to synthetically divide by negative 1, because if x plus 1 is a factor, x minus 1 is called a 0 or a root. It's also an x-intercept because it is real. So we're going to divide that root, negative 1, into 1. Notice I'm skipping an x squared. So that's 0, negative 13, and then negative 12. Make that line. Drop the first number, 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Combine, negative 1. Negative 1 and negative 1 is 1. Combine, negative 12. Negative 1 and negative 12 is positive 12. And we get 0, which we already knew was going to happen because they told us it was a factor. If it didn't happen, we better go back and check. Now, remember, once we divided, we depressed this equation. It was an x cubed. So now it's an x squared minus 1x minus 12. Well, this is quadratic. And we can find we can find more roots from a quadratic by factoring or doing quadratic formula. Well, this factor is easy, easy. This is x minus 4 and x plus 3. Two numbers that multiply to be negative 12, add to be negative 1. So don't forget the factor was already given to me is x plus 1. So these are the three factors. It should be three factors because it's cubic, but it didn't ask me to find the factors. Pay attention to what you're asked for. The factors are these three, but the roots or zeros are what you're asked for are x equals negative 1, x equals 4, and x equals negative 3 by setting each of those equal to 0. Okay, so try B here. Okay, so when I synthetically divided these, I got x squared plus 4x minus 12. I factored that quadratic and got x plus 6 and x minus 2. So remember, this was cubic, so I should have three factors. So I add in the one I was already given. Remember, those are the factors, but I was asked for the zeros. So the zeros would be setting those equal to 0. It would be negative 6, 2, and positive 3. Make sure you answer the question. Okay, last part, remainder theorem. So the remainder theorem is very handy. 
Um, there are a lot of times where maybe you want to find what f of negative 2 is or f of negative 1 is. And we know that just means plugging it in for x. But sometimes it's even easier just to synthetically dividing. If the remainder of a function has the same value as evaluating the function. So, in other words, when we divide by x minus a, the remainder after dividing is equal to f of plugging in that a value. So here, if we want to evaluate x of negative 2, if we divide by negative 2 into, synthetically, into 3, 8, 5, negative 7, the remainder I get will be the same thing had I just plugged in negative 2. Handy dandy. So if I drop the 3, I get negative 6. Combine, I get 2. Negative 4. Combine, 1. Negative 2. Combine, and I get negative 9. This is the remainder. So that means that f of negative 2 is equal to negative 9. I would have gotten that same answer if I had taken the negative 2 and done 3 to the negative 2 cubed plus 8 negative 2 squared plus 5 to the negative times negative 2 minus 7. But, I mean, that's not terribly hard, but I kind of think it was a lot easier just to synthetically divide. Sometimes it's going to be easier to do it this way sometimes easier to divide. It just depends on the problem. So the second question here was determine if negative 2 is a 0. It's not a 0 unless you plug it in and you get 0. So it's not a 0 because the remainder was not 0. Okay, so you try number 8, synthetically divide by negative 1, and see what remainder you get, and that's going to be f of negative 1. And then Okay, so I had to divide it, negative 1 into 3, negative 18, 20, negative 24. Notice there's no constant term, so make sure you put a 0 to hold that final constant term. When I synthetically divided, I ended up with a remainder of positive 65. So that means f of negative 1 equals 65, which means it's not a 0 because it's not equal to 0. Nice job. Go practice.